Welcome back to the Courtney's Notes version. Health Matters Simplified, so you can understand. Here we are live in Memphis, Tennessee. We've got Basil here with us and Luna's nearby here somewhere. We are here after golf today, doing the after golf cool down. There's Luna. Hey, Luna. Hi, Basil. Today we're going to focus really on the stretching part and the motion. We remember the spinal hygiene principles where we're always going to move it then we're going to stretch it, and then we're going to strengthen it, often replacing the strength with cooling down. And so that's what we're doing here. We're doing that after golf cool down. I want everybody to remember that this, watching these, does not create a doctor-patient relationship, and that this is just for educational and entertainment purposes. So please check with your doctor before you implement any healthcare change. So if you've checked and you're wanting to feel better, we're working today mostly with lower back pain. I have a history of ruptured discs, as you all know. And so we're going to start out today with some motion. And we're focusing again on the instruction. So we're going to start out in the quadruped position. Everybody get on their hands and knees. Of course, when we get on our hands and knees, we can be on our hands like this, or we can be on our fists like this. Now, if we're on our fists, we're doing that like we're driving, again, not like we're punching somebody. So get on our hands and knees, and we're going to start out today by doing some big circles for motion. So we're going to come forward, and then we're going to come back. And as we come back, we want to sit back onto our buttocks a little bit, and then we're going to come forward. And so we're doing a big clockwise circle here with our body. Think of your body like it's the hands of the clock and you're just doing a big clockwise circle. Now we're going to do that circle the other way. So we're doing a counterclockwise circle. <laughs> Basil's doing a circle around me. Hi Basil. So we do about 10 to 15 repetitions of those circles where our goal here right now is just to get a little motion happening. So we got a little motion with some of those circles. So now let's do the cat camel or the cat cow. We remember the cat camel and the cat cow. That's where we're in the quadruped position. And then we're going to arch our back and look up at the ceiling. And then relax out of it. Then we're going to tuck our chin and tuck your butt like you're tucking the tail, like a dog tucking their tail, and then relax out of it. And arch, and look up, and tuck, and look down. And arch, and look up, and tuck, and look down. You wanna do about 10 to 15 repetitions of that, where one repetition is the arch and the tuck. Watch out, Luna, you gotta make space here so that you're not blocking the camera. So let's do a little more of that motion with some cat camels and some cat cows. Hope everybody likes the dogs coming through here, keeping us company. And we'll keep doing motion. Arch and look up and tuck and look down. And arch and look up and tuck and look down. And today, mine is really hurting kind of right where the mid-back turns into the lower back. Watch out, Luna. Watch out. You guys got to stay not right in front of the camera, please. So again, I'm trying to focus right here, just right about where the ribs end. That's kind of where the pain is the greatest for me today in that upper lower back. All right, now that we've loosened it up a little bit, let's stretch our hands out to the edge of the mat, and then we're going to sit back into the child's pose. That child's pose is a good one to stretch your back and stretch your arms and stretch your shoulders a little bit. And I like to add a head nod. So we're doing the child's pose with a head nod. All right. Hi, Luna. Very good. Did you bring 
the ball. I'm just going to show that one more time. We're reaching our hands out in front. We're sitting back onto our heels, and then we're going to look up, and then down, and up, and down. You do about 10 head nods in that position. <laughs> we got these balls. Hey, babies. All right. Now let's start stretching into the legs and into the hip a little bit. I think today we should start with the hamstring here. So, putting the legs straight in front to start. So my right leg is straight. My toe is pointed up. I'm grabbing just below the patella on the left leg and pulling it towards me so that my back can straighten. See when I relax there, how my back kind of curls a little bit. So we're sitting up tall so that, so that the back can straighten while we stretch this hamstring. And let's do it the other side. Holding these about 10 to 15 seconds. And we're going to do about three to five repetitions of 10 to 15 seconds on each side. Loosening up these hamstrings. Now I'm doing the right side. And the left. Just like that. And the other side. Trying to keep your back straight. The right leg is straight. The right toe is pointing back. I'm applying pressure towards my chest, just below the patella of the right knee, and then switch to the other side. And pulling with the right knee now. The left leg is straight. And then from this one, I like to go right into that seated rotational stretch that we did the other day. So now we just take this right foot, cross it over the left knee. We're going to push down with the left hand, and then we're going to twist. So we're using the left arm to put pressure on the outside of the right leg at the right knee, creating a rotational stretch along the lower back. Let's go with the other side. So we get into the hamstring stretch position first. Then we take that foot, we cross it over, we push down. This time I'm pushing down with the left arm and then twisting. Just like that. Yeah, just like that. Hold that about 10 to 15 seconds. We're gonna do that three times on each side. So we've got left leg straight, we've got the left foot, toe pointed towards the ceiling, right foot is across, and we're rotating. And we really want to add that neck and try and look over that shoulder of that hand that's pushing down. So now I've got my right leg straight. We'll cross the left foot over and push down with the left hand, twisting and looking over that shoulder. And my neck just crunched right there, made a little pop. If you're taking yourself slowly through these motions, doing these stretches like we recommend, and you feel and hear your spine moving a little bit, then that's okay. But we don't really want you jerking quickly trying to twist and turn trying to make that popping sound because that's when you can sometimes could hurt yourself if you jerk it too hard or if you jerk it too fast you could cause a sprain strain injury and we talked about those sprain strain injuries in another video so you can look back on that now i'm ready to get into the psoas so we're stretching now the ilial psoas on the back and the external hip rotators on the front And so with this one, again, we start with these legs like two little check marks. And then you're turning your body. So right now, my belly button is square to the camera. Let's get the dogs out. So right now, I'm square to the camera with my belly button. And then I'm turning so that my belly button is going to rotate forward. So I'll show that one more time. So we're towards the camera. And then as we rotate forward, we shift 
the weight forward also so that we're starting to get that stretching also. So we're starting to get that stretch also into the front leg. So I'm feeling stretch in the psoas here and in the external hip rotator there. And then we'll do the other side. So getting into position, we got the legs like check marks. We start off with our stomach square to the camera. Square to the camera. And then we're rotating forward as we shift our hips forward. And this side's a little sore. So what we're doing here is we're adding a little pressure so that it's kind of lifting. So we're creating a little bit of a lifting of our upper body by pushing down here with our hands as we turn towards the front leg. Now I'm feeling a really nice stretch in the right external hip rotators. I'm feeling a little bit of a stretch in the left psoas here. And we'll rotate with that. Oh. I think I mentioned last week that I think this is really my favorite after golf stretch. And when we move back and forth, when we move back and forth through the motion, that's when we're doing the stretch more like it's a motion exercise. And when we hold that stretch for that 10 to 15 seconds, that's when we're really doing it more as a stretch. Remembering to get that rotation in the spine. Where'd that other ball go, guys? You hit two. Turning towards. I see we've got some notes here. Let's make, just make a quick. Excellent. We've got some good participation here today. And we'll get back to that stretching very soon. Good. So we're still doing that favorite after golf stretch. Let's do a couple more rounds of that. So we start with the check marks. We start with our stomach towards the camera, and then we're turning and shifting. And as we loosen up on this, we twist and turn just a little bit more. And we let that back leg straighten out and back foot shift back just a little bit. And the front leg, we want to shift forward. And then as we're shifting forward, we're rotating our pelvis so that the pelvis is going to end up facing forward towards that front, like the belly button's turning. And then the pelvis is going to turn that way as well until we're really feeling that stretch here on the front of the right leg and not into the psoas anymore. And let's do that same thing the other direction. So when we do it the other direction, same thing. We're going to start with the check marks. And we're going to rock forward. Oh, that feels good. And we're going to rock back. Oh, it feels good. And we're going to rock forward. And we're going to rock back. Putting some counter stress here. I'm pushing down on the knee here, and I'm pushing kind of against the rotation there with that other hand. Oh. So here against the rotation here, and it's a rotation, and then shifting forward. Oh, I love this stretch. Let's do the same thing the other way. I'm gonna do the same one. So while we do this, we start off with check marks, we rotate one more time here towards the camera and we rotate towards the front and we rotate. And then as we straighten that back leg and we shift forward, now I'm getting really loosened up here. So I'm going to add the quad stretch. Oh, yes. Does that ever feel good? And I want to hold that for 10 to 15 seconds 
there I'm getting that stretch on the front of the right leg. I'm getting it on the external hip rotators on the left leg. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. So starting off with our piriformis stretch, and we're shifting that weight forward, and we're shifting the weight back. And we're shifting the weight forward and turning that leg. So now we're getting the the quad on the left leg, we're getting the external hip rotators on the right leg, and then we can reach and grab that ankle and then look up. Oh, I love this stretch. Hi, baby. Just like that. Last time we talked about using ice versus using heat. And I really stress the fact that it depends what you're doing after as far as what you're going to use, whether you'll use ice or heat. Keeping in mind that whenever you use ice, you can always get back to some activity after about 30 minutes. So I always like ice when you're going to have at least 30 minutes to let that tissue warm back up before you do activity. And then when you do go back to that activity, you want to remember to do your warm up first. Remember, we've got those tips on what to do before exercise. And that number one tip, that number one tip to really help prevent sports injuries is going to be to warm up. And that matches everything that we teach. We always do that motion, then that stretching, and then that strength and endurance. And as you can see, we really go back and forth between motion and stretching. Motion and stretching go hand in hand. You move it a little bit, then you stretch it a little bit, and then you start it over. Move it, stretch it. Luna, release. Uh -uh, that was not good. Sorry, Luna. Let's try it for you, Basil. Basil, release the bowling. Who these dogs are really, really excited today. They did a lot of running while I was playing golf, but they're still, still really fired up. So we've gotten just about long enough. Yeah, we're 17, almost 18 minutes into this. Getting loosened up here nicely. <laughs> That's good. We got people that looked at the dogs are here. That's good. <laughs> Hopefully, they aren't in the way too much. Thank you. I love having the dogs here, too. This is how we can get two things done at once, because dogs need the exercise, and I need the exercise also, so we can exercise together. So now we're going to turn on to our back. We're going to have our feet and our knees about shoulder distance apart. Luna, release. It's release better. I shouldn't be pulling it out of your mouth. <clears throat> All right. So this is looking pretty good. We're going to be flat on our back with our feet and knees about shoulder distance apart. Okay. Feet and knees about shoulder distance apart. And we're going to do some pelvic curls. So for the pelvic curls, I can't see here. Sorry about that, guys. I know we got the dogs are just a little bit too rambunctious today. They're they're just they're in the way, I think. Um, so let's try this again. We're gonna do some pelvic curls. So with the pelvic curls, we're gonna arch and then relax and then tuck and then relax and arch and relax and tuck and relax. And then we'll go to a little bit of pelvic rolls where we're arching the ball or arching our back up to one side. Here, baby. Yeah, yeah, so we're arching it off to one side and then we're rolling it around the other. Can you do it right now? Luna, release. You heard, I know you got called, but you need to listen. Luna, release. Good girl. 
Good release. Good release. All right, so we arch, and then we relax, and then we tuck, and then we relax. Arch, relax, tuck, relax. And then wag the tail, and pelvic rolls. With wag the tail, we're really just arching off to one side, and then relaxing, and then arching off to the other side, and then relaxing. And with the pelvic rolls, again, we arch to one side and we roll around to the other side. Oh, it feels good. And then let's do some knee to chest stretch. For the knee to chest stretch, you're going to straighten one leg. You're going to grab the opposite knee, and then you're going to really pull it up towards your armpit. You want to hold that for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then do the same thing on the other side. Straighten the opposite leg. Pull that knee up towards the armpit and hold. And then do the same thing on the other side. All right, they've calmed down just a little bit again. So let me try and repeat what I was saying there about the ice. The deal with the ice, Luna, can you show them half? Luna, release. Release. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. And then you got to move out of the way. And then we do the other side. We take that knee and we pull it up to the armpit. And then the other side. And I'm feeling good and stretched out. So now I'm doing pulling these up a little bit quicker and not holding that full time. And then let's do some rotational stretch. So for the rotational stretch, what you want to do is shift your hips over to the side of the mat. Then you're going to straighten the leg that's in the middle of the mat and then shift and twist and then pull that knee down towards the ground. And I know you can hear the dogs in the background. They're getting some training in the other room. And same thing the other way. We're going to shift the hips over to the side. We're going to straighten the leg that's in the center of the mat. We're going to shift and twist. We're going to grab above the bent knee. We're going to pull that knee down towards the ground. Oh, does that feel good? Getting that stretch right in here. And we can put that hand out at 90 degrees, palm down. We can lift our head and look towards that outstretched hand. Oh, yes. This is my favorite stretch of all. We'll set it up again the other way. We're going to shift, straighten that leg, shift and twist. Our belly button is now pointing towards the camera. We're pulling the knee down towards the ground. Put that hand out at 90 degrees in the opposite direction. We're going to lift the head, turn it. Sit the head down and then look towards the outstretched hand. Oh, does that feel good? And back to the other side. So back to the, we always go back to the neutral position in between each one and feel center. And then we do the other way. So we're going to shift, straight, shift and twist. Grab above the bent knee, pull it down. Hand out at 90 degrees, lift your head, turn it up to the outstretched hand, then let it relax into the stretch. Oh, does that ever feel good? I want to thank everybody for joining us here tonight. I think we've got a little bit more time, so we're going to do a little bit more. But if these stretches are helping you, and if you have low back disc injury like myself, Please like these videos. Please go on and subscribe to the channel so that you can get more good information. We've got more stuff coming. Once we finish, I think we've got only two more weeks of golf left. So we've got two more weeks where we're going to do the after golf cool down. Then I'm going to take some weeks off while we're getting ready for the Sunday afternoon stretching. 
So the Sunday afternoon stretching series is the next thing that's coming up. And that's when we're really going to get into some exciting information. I'm hopeful that I'll have my body mic working by then. So our sound is going to be better. And uh, just really looking forward to that. Now I'm into the hip stretch and I know I'm supposed to be talking through every one of these today. So when we do the hip stretch, we're going to start out on our back with our feet and knees shoulder distance apart. We're going to cross one foot over the opposite knee. So I did the left foot over the right knee. Then we use the right leg to pull the left leg along for the right. We support at the knee just below the patella and we pull. So I'm pulling mostly on the right leg with that left leg coming along for the right. And the other side, cross the foot over, support the knees and pull it up, pulling up with the left leg. And then you can push down here with the right. Oh yeah. And that's really getting into this hip right here. All right, my hamstrings are feeling extra tight today. So I'm going to add another stretch. This is a stretch that we haven't done before on the YouTube. And for this one, we're going to use a yoga strap. You can take an old belt if it's long enough to, and that can work like a yoga strap. And this is how we're going to stretch our hamstrings when we're laying on our back. See, here's the problem. Here's the problem with these long ears. Here, Basil, show them. Show them what happened. Look, see how that ball got stuck in Basil's ear? Oh my, oh my, Basil. Here, let's, here, let's come in close to take this out. It's okay, we're gonna take it out. There you go, it's okay. Boy, that ball got stuck. <laughs> That's the risk of having those long ears. Yay, I got it out. Yay, I got it out. All right. Here we go for the hamstring stretch. So you're on your back, feet and knees, shoulder distance apart again. And then we're going to take our yoga strap and we're going to wrap, hook it at our heel. Now we want to straighten the leg of the foot that's not in the strap. And then I like to start with my knee a little bit bent here. Just show this new one here, Basil. So we got our knee a little bit bent. The hinge, the main hinge here is happening at the hip and we're using the yoga strap so that we're not having to use this strength in this leg. This leg is, is basically relaxed. And then I like to let my elbows kind of come up to the side as I pull. So now I'm pulling so that my leg is going in this general direction. So we pull it back. Just like that. And then I like to switch directly to the other side. So now I've got this leg straight. We got this one that we're pulling. All right, guys, you're blocking the camera again. Watch out, Linda. Watch out, you're in the way. All right, so I really want to walk through this here one more time without the distraction of the dogs. I apologize, there's almost too much today. I know I love having them here and really showing you how you can do, you know, how you can take care of your dogs and get your exercises done at the same time. Sometimes you really have to be patient with the dogs because they just want to play and they want to play and they want to play and they want to play. So you just keep them going and then you can do your stuff too. So we started on our back with our feet in these shoulder distance part. Yeah, it's okay to be in here, but you can't squeak that in here, guys. I need to, what I think I need to do is get some balls and take all the squeakers out, and then we can do this, I think, a little bit better. All right, yeah, I know you got it. Good job. Good job. Okay, so we're on our back, feet in these shoulder distance part. Now we're going to straighten the leg that we're not stretching first and just let it relax on the ground. Then we're hooking the yoga strap around the heel of the leg that we want to stretch. And then we kind of get our arms into position. Move the dog out of the way so that everybody can see. And then we're going to let this leg, as this leg gets pulled 
as the foot gets pulled up and back, you're going to feel it stretch right in there. Oh, yeah. There we go. So now I'm getting that stretch in the hamstring on the left leg. And everything else is just kind of relaxing into this. And then we're going to do the other side. So we do that three more times on each side. So hooking the right foot now, straighten the left leg, then start straightening the right leg as you pull that tension. Oh, yeah, I'm really feeling that hamstring stretch. And each time we do this, we should be able to stretch that a little bit further. This is a good one, too. And as it's getting loosened up, we can just switch the foot without actually lowering the legs. So this is how I really like to do this. Oh, it feels good. Holding that about 10 to 15 seconds. We're doing about three to five repetitions on each side. Really stretching those hamstrings. And this is a good time, I think, to discuss the post-isometric relaxation. And I didn't have an official word of the day today, but we could we could really say that is, I suppose. But the post-isometric relaxation is that when you have a muscle and you contract it, immediately after you contract it, there's going to be a relaxation response. And so we can use this when we're trying to lengthen the muscle. So for the hamstrings, the hamstrings are going to bend at the knee. So what we do, we start and we go just until we almost feel like it's going to stretch. And then we push and we activate the muscle. So we get it just until it's about to stretch, and then we activate the muscle. We hold that activation of the muscle for about three to five seconds, and then we really relax, then the muscle's going to lengthen just a little bit. So I'm going to switch to this side because I've been holding that. So if we find just short of where it's going to stretch, and then we contract two, three, four, five, and then we relax and go a little bit further. And we hold for about three seconds, three to five seconds, and then we contract. Two, three, four, five, and then you can go a little bit further. And relax, and then contract. So you're doing a contraction, and then there's a post-isometric relaxation. And we do that same thing now with the other side. So we bring it up. And we push, and then when we relax, it goes a little bit further. And we hold, two, three, four, five, push, two, three, four, five, relax, two, three, four, five, push, two, three, four, five, relax, two, three, just like that. So that was a new hamstring stretch for everybody. Yeah. Now, after doing that one, I'm feeling that sore there in my lower back again. So I want to go back into the rotational stretch because it was the rotational stretch that was really helping it to feel the best. So back on the back, shift and twist. Oh, yes. This one is always my go-to. Really, it's between the pelvic curls, the pelvic rolls, and the pelvic twist stretch. Those are probably the ones that I do the most. If we think about the fact that I've had three, at least three ruptured discs in my lower back, I would say these are really good exercises for people that have a history of ruptured discs. Of course, if you've cleared it with your doctor. We've also talked about this hip stretch that I really love. And then, of course, that psoas stretch. And when you pull up into the stretch and you don't feel any stretching happening, then you really don't have to hold it. Then just go into the next thing and use that more like it's a motion exercise at that moment. Now, here I am feeling a little bit still in that hip there. And my back is feeling a lot better. My back was really sore today after golf. Basil, right here. Basil, drop it. Good boy. Good boy.
And so we really have to stretch it out. Oh, that feels good. All right, we are almost done here for today. I always want to end when it's feeling better. So I always like to do some stretches that feel really good as the last thing. So that's usually going to be some rotational stretches, might be some pelvic curls, some pelvic twist stretch, a little bit of motion. <laughs> Thank you, Basil. He just put his tail right in my face. Maybe some knee to chest stretch. That always feels good. We do a little knee to chest stretch. That knee to chest stretch always feels good. Oh, a little clunk in my hip on that one. And then let's do just one more here with some rotation. Oh, yes. And so you can see here as we're cooling down, we're really not holding these as long, but really feeling that movement, feeling that stretching. Really feeling that starting to feel a lot, lot better. Wow. All right. So thank you, everybody, for coming out here to watch. Bring the dogs in for a salutation. Let's see. Do we have Luna, Basil? Good doggies. Hi. Hi. Set your ears down. Let's let those ears down. There you go. I hope everybody is feeling a little bit better. We got Luna came by to say hello, to say goodbye. And we got Basil has been here having a lot of fun. So thank you for watching the Courtney's Notes version. And remember, get adjusted because it feels good. And play with your dogs. They love it. They need it. Thank you. See you all next week. I hope everybody enjoyed.